part of doing science and sports is oftentimes it clarifies what the athlete is trying to do. And so by doing the sports science in the training center in Indianapolis, we actually put force plates in the top of the 10 meter tower. We could actually measure the forces they're generating right at takeoff. And by doing so, the coaches and athletes could actually now begin to visualize the forces that they are actually causing the motion that they see. The athletes feel the forces and the coaches see the effect of the forces. But by measuring the forces, they both can kind of get a sense of what those forces actually are. In diving, you need time in the air, and that's generated by vertical velocity at takeoff. Simply put, if you push on the ground, it pushes back at you. If you push harder on the ground, it pushes more on you. And if you get more vertical, you get more vertical velocity, more time in the air, and that allows you to complete the dive. You also need to clear the platform. So you want the height, but as you rotate, you might be in a pike position. And you want to be sure that as you go up, you translate so you're far enough from the platform that you don't hit anything on the way down. The third thing that you need is rotation. So now what's important is if here's the body and the force is going straight through the body, there's no rotation. If you apply a force this way, it'll rotate this direction. You apply a force this way, it'll rotate that direction. So now you need vertical, horizontal, and it aimed in such a way that you either get the forward or backward rotation. The 10 meter platform is rigid. Once you leave the tower, the path of your center of mass is just going to go through a parabolic path. So if you want to be able to rotate or you want height on that path, everything has to happen during the takeoff. So while you're standing with your feet or hands interacting with the tower, that's the time to generate the force that you need to do the skill. Part of getting a good jump off the tower or the board is practicing how to do those jumps on dry land. And so oftentimes when you go to a diving well, you'll see over to the side of the pool, there'll actually be a dry land training area. If you can do consistent jumps in dry land, you know that you're going to be more apt to do that on the 10 meter tower. By trying out techniques and a spotting belt, you're able to experiment and really fine tune your technique before you take it to the water. Other things that we work on is visual perception. They need to know where they are in space, and so they're rotating very quickly, and they're going to spot the water so they can kick out, hit the body position so they'll rotate and enter the water vertically. Key part on the arms is in the water entry because it's going to be the first thing that goes to the water. And you'll see as the diver goes through, they're going to actually clasp their hands and try to go in in a nice alignment. So we spend a lot of time on the athletes and trying to keep the core nice and solid and getting the arms lined up so they can be straight as an arrow when they enter the water. The reason why they want to enter the water vertically is that they're going to go into the water and bring all of that water down with them. Once you're under the water, you want to create a small hole so the water that comes up doesn't make a big splash. Then you're more apt to get higher scores if you can enter without a splash. And that's called a rip entry and they call it a rip entry because it literally sounds like you rip a piece of paper. And so to have that perfect entry, that means you have to do a lot of things right in the flight as well as on the tower.